Hey guys, Alfie here, and um, this is my video response for episode 214. That was a great episode, guys. Really jam-packed, and um, especially the gal. It's it's really good to have you know, someone so passionate about the guitarist of the week, because Pappy, you really, really brought that to another level with all the information. But anyway, let's, um, let's just start from the top, and I'll try to make this one short as usual. Um, just talking about Sweetwater, that was, that's pretty good how they deliver international. And... Um, so I went on the website because there are a couple of things that I want to buy and the shipping was $50, $50 and that, that's, that's pretty steep, you know, just, just for buying like little things like pedals and, and stuff, you know, stuff that's going to be in a box like this big. But, you know, that is another option and um, if the price is cheap there, the only thing that is when it comes into Australia, it might have to be declared and I might have to pay some customs tax on it. So. Um, yeah, we'll see how we'll see how that goes. But if I can get it cheaper, I'll definitely be buying from them. Uh, the music store I go to is seriously it's a, it's over an hour's drive from where I live, and um, I go there because there's no BS. Um, they always give you the lowest price, and you can even ask for a lower price. And um, when they say they've got something, they've got it, and they'll get it for you, and that's that. Um, that was the same music store that gave me the free pickup, the free blackout um, that I put on my Ibanez. Um, and it's a store where I've, I've purchased everything from. I've got the Black Star amp you see there, the TC Electronic um, G Major 2 guitar effects unit. I, um, yeah, I've got half my microphones from there. And um, yeah, really, really good store. But if um, Sweetwater can beat the price, well then they can beat the price, that's that. So, um, anyways. Let's uh, let's get to some of the stuff in the episode. You got a free guitar, Pappy. That is fantastic. I'm just on the Flatline website, and I really like how they've got that sort of you know like I've got to be wrong, 40s, 50s sort of era with the models and the old car. Um, now I hope that Telecaster plays well, as you're saying, it's one of the best playing um, Telecaster style guitars. Because I'm looking at the MSPR right now, and that is two thousand four hundred and ninety-eight dollars, dude. You're one lucky individual. The only free stuff I've gotten so far is this Chrome Frets thing, which I'm supposed to do a review on. Um, maker of that's asked me if I'd do a video review. I said, yeah, yeah, I get some free stuff, but man, that is that is cool. So, um, yeah, yeah, cool, cool guitar. And um, as for the bookshelf idea, I, um, I I think that's a fantastic idea. That's like the shelf I've got here behind me. So this shelf here is kind of like dedicated to music. I've got my pedals on the two bottom shelves there. <clears throat> microphones and cables, uh, music books there, and then we've got some of my f other effects, the G major and cable up the top. And it's kind of odd if I put other things on, like I had a printer on there once and it, I just didn't like it. I didn't like it one bit. I did not like it at all. So I had to take it off. But I think that's a cool idea and you know what, it's still music related. But um, yeah, anyway, pipes with the, um, I would really like to see that stay restless stage with the 600 LEDs. That is insane. That would have taken forever to um, solder in. But dude, um, yeah, post a picture of that. I'll be eager to see that, that's for sure. So anyway, let's, let's get into the episode. The um, GigaFX Overdrive pedal. That is a really interesting pedal. Looking at the picture, I think it's a really good concept. Um, I like the sound of it. It's not really the type of overdrive that I would use, but its, it's versatility is, is like unmatched. You know, it does replace a, a number of pedals you could have on your pedal board. I think that's really cool. And I did like the sound clips, Pappy. I thought they were really good. And um, you know, it gave us an idea of what they sound like. And, and I, I always want the sound clips on, your, on the episode that you guys do. Um, if you do any reviews, you know, I think sound clips are really, really important. And um, in this instance, you know, we just want to know what the pedal sounds like to give us an idea of it if we want to purchase one. And um, yeah, no, really, really cool review. I liked it. So uh, let's just get into the Gao, the living end. Here is my copy of the uh, self-titled album. I haven't actually bought an album since. I was into these guys when I was in school and um, I was in high school. And it's... Um, yeah, it's a, it's a really, really good album, really good Australian music, and, um, you know, I really like it. I've kind of grown into um, diff different genres of music these days, but I still enjoy The Living End. I thought that was a really, really good gal that you guys did. Very, very informative, a lot of information. And um, speaking of the Holden Kingswood, the 77 model, my parents had one of those when I was a little kid, I remember. I must have been maybe six or seven years old, and that was like the family car. And um, I remember it even had a vinyl roof. 
It was like a goldy browny color with a vinyl roof. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Uh, plenty of those around here. If you ever want one pipes, you can pick them up for around a thousand bucks, maybe cheaper. You know, so. But um, yeah, that's that's a really interesting story. You know, poor guy gets hit, and um, you can't play guitar, can't move, but as you said you know it's it's the dedication and motivation of, of the individuals and i think that's what really sets apart um a lot of successful musicians you know they, they never give up no matter what happens to them they never give up and keep trying you know they don't they don't you know settle for a day job they don't you know they just believe in the music and they keep going and chris cheney proved that because they, they, they're still pretty big in australia you know um, but I thought that was really, really well done, especially with um, all the information and on his gear too. That that was cool, and um, with the guitars. Yes, I, I mean living in Australia, I could probably get the uh, signature White Falcon, but not for that price. No way in the world would I pay that much. And um, you don't get too much of an opportunity to haggle here in Australia anyway with music stores. So that'd uh, be expensive, and then like you said, expensive to post to America, and um, hopefully it gets there in one piece. But, um, yeah, no, I mean, the living end were, were a big part of my life when I was, I was making the transition. When I was younger, I used to just follow everyone else around and do whatever was cool. And I used to listen to, like, R&B and rap. And then um, one of my friends introduced me to um, some punk, and I mean, like, Pennywise, uh, Descendants, stuff like that. And um, I started listening to things like Offspring, and then I got into, like, the living end. And um, really, honestly, like, it sounds cliche, but it really changed my life. You know, I stopped following people and started listening to things that, that I wanted to and um, pretty much told you know, my homeboy friends here I get stuffed because I, I didn't like that sort of stuff. But you know, it's, it's, it's albums like this that really made a huge impact. But um, yeah, and um, I, I never thought that um, Pappy would actually mention um, that we were going to do a second solution for the album, for the last... Uh, last Bliss album, I thought that would be a secret that would die with us. But um, yeah, I, and um, if you are wondering, uh, Pappy, I was a little bit relieved in not doing it. I, I, was got, I got halfway through the solo and I was struggling a little bit with the solo. You now I was getting it, I just, I just need a little bit more time to practice and, and when we were doing it I was, I was just you know, getting home late and I just didn't have time to practice. So I think we still would have made the cut, but um, you know, it was, it was a big learning curve just trying to do sort of things like that with um, other people and, and getting everything together and finding the time time to uh, record things properly and then being on the same page. And uh, Pappy's right, there, there was a few videos, instructional videos I did for him and I had, and I, I think Pappy is a little bit more relieved than me because I kept trying to change the idea, like I had the idea of like a jazz version of Second Solution. A um, bit of a slower sort of thing, and then I changed up the guitar and things like that. So, it uh, would have been a nice song to do. Um, unfortunately, um, we we just um, didn't have the time to do it. You know, maybe another day. But um, anyway, yeah, it's, it was it was a lot of fun um, doing a song with Pappy, and um, hope to do it again, or anyone else out there in Blissland. So. Um, yeah, great gal, really, really liked it, really liked the episode, guys. I'm going to cut this one short because I think I've been talking too much. But anyway, I uh, can't wait for episode 215, so uh, bliss on.